Hey guys, this is Mr. Cell. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully everyone's doing okay with uh, coronavirus stuff. Hopefully you guys are healthy and staying safe. So to start off with module 7 here, looks like we're going to be starting with the order of operations. So to help us understand the order of operations, we also need to understand that it is a method to help us break down problems uh, it doesn't matter how big or small the math problems are, but it helps us to break these problems down into smaller, more manageable problems. And uh, what it does is it breaks it up into four steps. Now, I've, I've shown the three and four bigger because it actually involves two different operations. Now, just keep in mind, we're not going over all of the operations. Uh, you'll expand on this more later, but for now... When we look at some of these operations, just know that there are, particularly in the first one, right, with parentheses, that there are different types of parentheses. And the ones that we've seen, of course, look something like this. Or you may see them as absolute values. Now, just so we understand in the future, it would also include things like roots or square roots as well. But for our class, we're just looking at parentheses and absolute values for now. Which we, we've kind of seen, right? For example, in the past, when we saw an example like this one, um, you would do the absolute value first, which would give you 10, and then you would apply this negative. That's an order of operations problem, because it forces us to do the parentheses or absolute values first. After parentheses, we have exponents, which we've seen. And uh, if we remember that exponents are repeated multiplication, then it will help us to understand what would come next in this order, okay? What I mean is that after exponents, then you would do either multiplication or division. Now, this OR statement is a big deal because a lot of people think that multiplication always comes first but that is not true multiplication does not always come first division can come first and it's dependent upon a condition of left to right so when we look at the problems it's almost like we're scanning the problem and then searching for either multiplication or division because it is possible that division will come first which we will see in the problems to come so that would be the third step, uh, which does include both of those operations. Now, you can see we've covered um, some of the more not basic ones, such as parentheses and exponents. But multiplication and division are very basic operations. So naturally, what would come next after multiplication or division would be, again, it'd be these two operations of either addition or subtraction. But again, it is conditional. It's either addition or subtraction, but it has to be scanning the problem from left to right. Now, to expand on this, um, just be careful with this because a lot of people remember this as P-E-M-D-A-S, PEMDAS, and they remember it by thinking of, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, which you've probably heard. However... Just keep this in mind that uh, it's not always PEMDAS, right? Sometimes it comes out as PEDMAS, okay? Or it even could come out as PEDMSA, okay? So just understand that PEMDAS is great, like if you need to memorize that, but you need to keep in mind that either multiplication or division means that sometimes division comes first, or either addition or subtraction means sometimes subtraction comes first. It depends on which comes first from left to right. I want to look at the distributive property here kind of separately, all right? So the distributive property, and we can see up there it shows as A times B plus C. Okay, so this is the quantity of A multiplied by the sum of these two numbers. Now, uh, for the problems we're going to see, of course, you could use the order of operations, but if you use the distributive property, sometimes it can change problems to be a little bit easier looking 
than they are originally, or they may even allow us to do it in our heads. So what this is saying, uh, let, let's replace these with numbers, okay? So we'll make it fairly easy, right? Two times, uh, we'll make it, um, B can be three and C can be, bam, five right there, okay? Now, if we were to read this using uh, the basis or the foundation of multiplication, right? This is saying that we have two groups of three and five. Now, it's not just two groups of three. It's not just two groups of five. It's two groups of both of those, right? So even if I were to use counters and separating these by color, right? You'd have three, but you'd have it twice like this. And then the five, you'd have that, one, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, three, four, five, two groups of that. Now, the question is, how much total is that? Well, that would be the same as taking these two groups of three, which is six, as it shows, and then these two groups of five, which is ten, and adding those together which is 16. Of course, uh, we don't require that you guys use this method. You could have looked at this and said, well, I've got the order of operations, right? Which means you would have done the set of parentheses first, which is three plus five is eight in the parentheses. Now you have two groups of eight, which is the same as the 16. So it works either way. And uh, you get to choose which way you like the best, but you could find two groups of three first and two groups of five and then add those two numbers together. So back to the worksheet where it says up here to apply the distributive property, we are going to do that, okay? Now, right now you may think that it's not really completely necessary and that's okay because right now we're just dealing straight with numbers so it's not really necessary to use it but if we can get used to using it right now then when the time comes to use it um, with variables, or in other words, maybe one of these numbers is a letter, then it becomes a little bit easier. And they've shown it up here that the distributive property works um, for both addition and subtraction, right? So we're just, we're just distributing it in, into each of those letters like that. But again, those letters would represent numbers like they've shown in these examples. Now, in using the distributive property, it's most common to use what they call the distributive rainbows. And no, that is not a technical term. It would not be on any vocabulary tests. But those two rainbows here that I've shown are the distributive rainbows. And yes, we do need to be careful because in the past it's been proven that when adults see double rainbows that they resort to weeping. So, in this one, right, I've got the 3, and I would have to multiply it by the 2 first. Now, keep in mind, when we do this, we keep the operation, all right? So, I'm going to keep that as a plus. And then, the second distributive rainbow shows that I would take the 3 and 5 and multiply those together. Now, by the word of operations, I have multiplication and addition, right? Well, there's, I just got rid of the parentheses with distribution. I don't see any exponents. So now I go to multiplication or division. Now in this one, and this is true with distribution, is that there's there shouldn't be any division anyways, unless maybe you got fractions. So I'm just looking at multiplying these values. 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 5 is 15, which we are adding together. And from here, 6 plus 15 is 21. So this answer is 21. Now, before we move on, I just want to point out that, yes, I did have some multiplication here and here. Distribution is multiplication. So where we have these rainbows that go to these numbers, right? We're taking this number on the outside and combining it with these numbers on the inside. And when I say combine, I'm talking about multiplication because distribution is multiplication. So what about this one? Using the distributive property, again, 
I would have a rainbow here with 2 and 40 so that's 2 times 40 and then a second rainbow with 2 and 8 so that's 2 times the 8 alright and again we're adding these together and by the order of operations no parentheses no exponents but I do have multiplication or division and this is my first set of multiplication 2 times 40 which is 80 and then the second set of multiplication 2 times 8 which is 16 and yes we are adding these together so finally 80 plus 16 is 96 so the answer to this one is 96 Again, with the distributive property um, there's a couple ways to look at that minus sign right there right now we're looking at that minus sign as just a minus, okay? Now, I'll, I'll show this the other way, too, okay? However, right now, let's just keep it what it is. And then we're going to distribute the 7 into both of these numbers, 100 and 2. So, again, I'm keeping that operation, the minus or plus, for now. So, the first distribution rainbow shows 7 times 100. And then the second rainbow is with 7 and 2 multiplied together. So again, I don't see any parentheses anymore now that I've simplified the expression. And there's no exponents, so I go straight to multiplication. 7 times 100 is 700. 7 times 2 is 14. Now again, this one, we're subtracting these two. And 700 minus 14 would be 600 86. So the answer to this one is 686. So again, I don't want you to be confused by the subtraction right there. Now, I'm going to show this a second way. So doing the same problem, I am going to use distribution, but like we've shown in the previous unit, is I don't have to show this as a subtraction problem. So if you are, if it's easier for you to understand this as addition, you could change it to 7 parentheses 100 plus and again this minus 2 now is becoming is going to become a negative 2 right there so it's like distributing the 7 into the parentheses we are keeping the operation as addition but now I'm distributing a 7 to a negative 2 and again I don't know if this helps but if it does then you can use this method all right so I got 7 times 100 still nothing really changed right there but then I have 7 times this negative 2. And when I combine these now, I got 7 times 100, which is still 700. But now I'm adding what is this negative 14. Now again, I'm putting in parentheses, just so we know that it is adding a negative. And when you combine these, again, the signs are opposite. The 700 is bigger, so there's more positives and then you would do 700 minus 14 anyways which as we've seen is 686 so again I'm just pointing this out you get the same answer either way um, but if it's easier for you, see, for you to see this problem as an addition problem then feel free to do it alright now looking back to 1.1 I hope you remember this concept of expanding numbers. We're writing numbers in what they called ex expanded form. And I believe this was on page 2 of 1.1, but I remember if we took a number like 100 and, I don't know, 86, okay, you could rewrite this as 100 plus 80 plus 6, okay? And this would be the same number in expanded form. Well, if we use this method, sometimes it can make um, this multiplication of problems a little bit easier. And I'll tell you guys this right now, um, that there's uh, a lot of math people, especially when they get into more advanced math, when you see people doing problems in their head, is they're usually using this method, especially with multiplication, division of smaller values, right? Like if we took this example of five groups of, it could even be a big number, right? Like 
3,000 and uh, 20, I don't know, 21, okay? So we may look at this number and like, well, dude, we're going to have to use long multiplication on this thing. However, if we were to break this down, and again, this is usually what math people do, and we said, look, I'm going to break up 3,021 into 3,000, a 20, and a 1, and I'm just going to add these together. Well, then it becomes a distribution problem. And again, this is all happening in people's heads. They don't think it's distribution. Uh, mathematically speaking, though, it is, is you do 3 times, I'm sorry, 5 times 3,000, which is 15,000. You do 5 times 20, which is 100. And then 5 times 1, which is 5. And again, they're simply adding these together in their head in order to create the final answer, which is 15,105. Now, again, there, there are sometimes, like I use this method. However, sometimes just by the carrying of value, sometimes I get these a little mixed up, which is why you guys see in the lessons when I make mistakes. Usually these are the minor mistakes that I make when I do them in my head. All right, so um, looking at these numbers, right, we're just looking at the numbers in the parentheses, particularly because they're two or more digit numbers, like three and seven or nine and eight. Now, they could be three-digit numbers like the, or even four-digit numbers like the ones we saw in the example I, I showed there. But whatever the case, we're going to be looking this, at this as 4 times... 30 and 7. So we're going to combine these together, right? Now again, if I were to look at this problem as well, I would be doing it in my head this way, not that I would be showing work, right? So from here, I distribute the 4 into the 30 to get us started. So 4 times 30, and then the second distribution from 4 to 7 4 times 7, and I keep that operation as addition. So, right here I'm going to do 4 times 30, which is 120, and then 4 times 7, which is 28, and I add these together to get 120 plus 28, 148. Now, one of the reasons why this becomes so nice when we get used to our multiplication tables is I didn't really do, in, like if I did this in my head, I didn't really do 4 times 30. I did 4 times 3 to get 12, and then I tacked the 0 on to make it 120. So the 0 right there makes this really easy because I know whatever the 1's value I get from the 4 times 7 is the 1's place value of the answer. And then 12 plus 2 is 14. I got 14 and 8, 148. Again, this is how I would do a problem like this in my head. So again, I'm going to describe the process to you without showing the work, right? I got 3 times 98. So 3 times 9 is 27. So I know that's 270. And then 3 times 8 is 24. Now, I'm not even looking at the 200 right now. I'm just, I would just be thinking 70 plus 24 is 94. So now I've got 94 with the 200, 294 should be our answer. But let's go ahead and check. So I am going to change this problem to 3 times 90 plus 8. And now I can do my distribution of 3 times 90, which is 270. And then 3 times 8, the second distribution, which is 20. And again, we are adding these together. 270 plus 24 is 294, just like we said it was going to be in the beginning. This is our final answer. All right, now um, we, we've shown those two problems, or two methods, by using the distributor property to solve these and also um, by changing numbers into their expanded form to be able to use the distributive property. Again, it wouldn't completely be necessary, right? If you saw, like in this example, 5 times 46, you could just do 5 times 46, use the old-fashioned multiplication way, and then get your answer that way, okay? 
Um, but just keep in mind that sometimes these are a little helpful. If they're not, again, we just want you to get used to using the distributive property because it is going to come back, if not in uh, for the rest of this class, then definitely in 950 and 980. It's coming back. All right, so here's the next page. Our objective, simplify numerical expressions by following the order of operations with two operations. Now, you remember the name of this section is uh, order of operations, but uh, with two steps. So we shouldn't see anything more than two steps on these. So yeah, we can start this off. The order in which mathematical values are combined is the same in every language. Consider each sentence. Does it really matter how I write them? Mitt Romney said, Barack Obama won the election. Who won the election? Well, on the second one, it says, Mitt Romney said Barack Obama won the election. Now who won the election? Well, uh, from these two statements, we can see that the first one is Mitt Romney speaking, and in the second one, Barack Obama is speaking. So, not that we really care about uh, if you know the grammar or not, but just the way that these would be even spoken would change who won the election, or who we think won the election, right? Same exact words, but by punctuating them differently, or speaking them differently, will change who won the election. So in the first one, it was... Barack Obama won the election, because that's what Mitt Romney said. But in the second one, Barack Obama said Mitt Romney won the election. Now, this isn't really meant to be a political statement. It's just to help us understand that the way that we say things will change an outcome, which is true in mathematics. If we um, look at the language or the order of things in a different way, then it can give us an answer, a different answer, which is why we have the order of operations. If we stick with the order of operations, then everything stays um, orderly. Or that there's a common algorithm which will help us to get to the same answer every time, um, and we don't have to worry about what is it that I do first, or about getting different answers which would cause a lot of confusion, right? So that's the nice thing about mathematics is it is orderly and it gives us something to propel off of so that not everyone is getting different answers or coming to different conclusions from the same problem or um, from the same communication, right? Like, again, depending on how you read these, and this is the subjectivity of English, I suppose, is depending on the way that you read these or even the way that they're spoken will change the way that we look at the answers on those. But again, going back to what I said in the beginning of this lesson, is the order of operations is a nice way to break problems down, and they could be large problems, like we're only going to see three terms usually with these. But in the future, when we see really big problems, is it breaks down the problems into smaller, more manageable parts. So even in the example that they give us here with the math, up here at the top, right? So the same exact problem, but if you do the subtraction first, right here, you get the 4. And then if you do the 4 divided by 2, you get an answer that is 2. But if you do the division first, over here on the right, 16 divided by 2 is 8, and then 20 minus 8 is 12, they are two very different answers. And again, this is another purpose for the order of operations, is it gives us a technique to use on all problems so that everyone can come to the same conclusions. So like it says there, notice that the order in which we perform these operations matters. It changes the answer. Order matters. You have to keep in mind the order properly so that um, you come to the same conclusions and that everyone can come to the same conclusions no matter what. And again, this is all about communication of what the problem is. Now, a lot of the times it really boils down to what the basic operations are. 
particularly addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So uh, if we look at addition and subtraction as the foundation, multiplication and division really are repeated either addition or subtraction. So if we look at it in, that, in those terms, then hopefully it's obvious which one would come first and which one would come second. So over here, right, it shows that uh, it says P or B. Um, the P parentheses, brackets really to me, which is the B, is a type of parentheses. Um, but it also includes those absolute values and radicals. One that I did not mention in the beginning is these fraction bars up here. So just keep in mind that if you see fraction bars in the order of operations, you need to evaluate the numerator and denominator separately. It doesn't matter which one you do first, but you got to do one or the other. And then uh, break that down into one single, what would be, division problem. All right, then you got your exponents. And again, we're pointing this out, it's multiplication or division, and then it's addition or subtraction. Again, whichever comes first from left to right. All right, let's go ahead and start on these problems. So, so for any... Now again, I just want you guys to remember that it is four steps, it's not six. Um, we do have the six operations, but we're only looking at it in six steps. For example, the first one... Again, parentheses, there are none. Then exponents, there are none. And then again, I look for either multiplication or division. And moving from left to right, I have this division, which is going to be first. 36 divided by 3 is 12. And then we've got that multiplied by 6, right? So that took care of the division. But then I've got to take care of the multiplication because it was farther to the right than division and 12 times 6 is 72 which is our final answer for this problem now again notice right now we're just dealing with this in two operations um, but later on I, I believe we're going to be looking at more operations than just two alright so on this problem again I look for parentheses there are parentheses this set of parentheses, so I would look on the inside of that parentheses, which is 5 plus 2, and that would be 7. Alright, so that's what I get from the parentheses, and that is to the power of 2. So that takes us to exponents, which this one has, and this would be the same as 7 times 7. Uh, and again, I'm pointing, I, I'm kind of showing this so that we can see that Exponents really are a multiplication. And 7 times 7 is 49. Now this completes the problem. There was no need for multiplication or division or addition or subtraction. So those two took care of it. Now next up. Uh, remember, absolute values. Uh, we should be used to seeing these. That is a set of parentheses. So the first thing I would do is take 11 minus 23, okay? And um, I would write that as 11 plus negative 23. So when we see absolute values like this, it's not a matter of taking the absolute value of either one of those first. We have to do the operation inside of parentheses first. And later on when we see bigger problems, we'll find that when we look at parentheses, we have to start the order of operations over from the beginning inside the parentheses. So what I'm, what I'm saying there is if you have parentheses inside parentheses, you have to start with those inside parentheses to start the problem, okay? Not that we've seen any, any like that, okay? Now again, this is an absolute value problem. Now right here when I combine these, 11 plus negative 23, I know I have more negatives than positives. Then I take the big number and subtract the small one. 23 minus 11 is 12. So I got negative 12 right now, but it's an absolute value of negative 12, which gives us a final answer of 12. 
because negative 12 is 12 away from 0, and these absolute values are asking how far a number is from 0. All right, and that completes this worksheet. Thanks for watching, you guys. I hope this was helpful. You can stay safe out there, stay healthy. And uh, if you guys got questions, let me know. We'll talk to you in the next lesson.